On some occasions in the past, I have been asked and responded to the request to make a talk video about my ideas on a subject for school or in response to a question concerning my research. That isn't the case in this video. I'm making this video because I felt my class didn't want to hear from me at school. And I thought I'll make this video in case they ever change their mind. I'll keep it brief. It concerns climate change and global warming. And the problem that I want to address concerning global warming and climate change has to do with the impact on uh, our health and our welfare and well-being. Um, it's a consequence of global warming. One particular problem that affects the elderly will be heat stroke. Um, now, I, I, I'm a man pushing 60. I've lived through a great deal. A wonderful and great woman named Martha Galhorn. I was privileged to receive a um, letter from her concerning my hard and difficult labors as a journalist who was um, not employed by anybody. I'm just concerned about trying to get to the, the bottom of some things. And this woman had witnessed the liberation of Dachau. She saw the Russians invade, um, I mean, liberate Berlin. She was with the president of um, Finland when they invaded Helsinki and escaped on skis. She was a writer for Coolio's magazine. She lived in a White House with Helena Roosevelt and covered black lung. Um, Ernest Hemingway dedicated for him the bell tools to her. She uh, refused to come back to this country after the murder of JFK, God bless her but was featured on a U.S. postage stamp after she died. And one of the things I recall reading about her, she wrote a book called The Face of War. She was a correspondent for Collier's magazine, who um, went to Spain with $75 to help the Abraham Lincoln Brigade before war even broke out. A gifted woman of conscience. And she said that the human being can seems to be able to survive almost anything if given half a chance. She had seen combat casualties who managed to overcome unbelievable injury, make something of their lives. And, you know, I was attacked very viciously when I was just a child. I always was amazed that I managed to live to be 40, 50. But I also know from things that have happened in the interval that the day comes when you have trouble climbing the stairs. You, you fall and you can't get up. It's, it, it, it's a deeply humiliating experience for many people. You have to call for help. And we talk about not caring about the children, and it's true that we are abandoning our children's futures and responsibility to our children's futures, but we're also abandoning the elderly. We're abandoning them to the future that we shouldn't be creating this way in the first place. Many of the elderly people who tried to escape and failed in Katrina were in nursing homes and they drowned. And we're going to see heat deaths all over the world. Now, I grew up in a Jewish Holocaust survivor community. I know that people who vote Trump and so forth, and I've seen a lot of different kinds of arguments about politics in our country. Most people keep their heads about the First Amendment, no matter how vociferously they disagree about something. And 
we've often wondered because occasionally something goes very, very wrong, as it did with the deaths of the Kennedy brothers. Almost the folk adage, can it happen here, what happened in Germany? I just want to say that it did happen here. It was on this earth. We're all together in that way. And we're abandoning our future to something that could be absolutely catastrophic. And even if it doesn't come to be catastrophic, it's grossly unnecessary to abandon the future this way and to abandon the elderly to a future that we're abandoning. I hope that you'll consider what's next in mitigating this challenge by not being so obstinate about what we know